Good morning, my name is Jackie Hemsworth and I'm the Executive Director for Access Shelter. Welcome to our 2020 Annual Access Breakfast. We're here broadcasting live from my office at the Emergency Shelter. I hope everybody has their first cup of coffee and hopefully some of you have your complimentary cup of coffee from our new coffee partner, Akron Coffee Roasters. Now, while we did not originally plan to have a virtual breakfast, and um, we had hoped to see everybody as usual at Quaker Station, we're really happy that all of you could join us this morning and hear more about what's been happening at the shelter, hear success stories, and hear more about what we have planned for the year ahead. And of course, you always have the opportunity to make a donation to support our mission. We're excited to announce, if you have not heard, that we have received a $5,000 matching gift by a very special friend of the organization. What this means is the first 5,000 in donations that we received this morning will be matched. So your donation can be doubled this morning. Just scroll down on the page and you'll see the link to, note to donate this morning. I wanna give a special thanks to our amazing board of directors here at Access Shelter. They've done so much to support this special event this morning, so thank you so much. Next, I'd like to recognize our fabulous sponsors of our event this morning. Please take a look at the sponsors listed on the page now. Our two champion level sponsors, Cleveland Clinic, Akron General, and s and Bank are ready to kick off our morning with some great messages for us. Hi, I'm Dr. Debbie Plate. I'm a family physician here at Cleveland Clinic, Akron General, and really excited that you all are here this morning with us. My relationship to Access has actually uh, really been very long term. I'm currently a board member and thrilled to be serving this year. Very exciting for me. But more importantly, I have actually been involved with their care clinic over the last uh, 15 plus years. We have a clinic there where we actually see the women and offer a work physical and also offer treatment for things like blood pressure, diabetes, headaches, migraines, uh, depression, a number of different things. And we also, as family physicians, can see the children at times as well. So really rewarding. The mission at Access is very, very important, and we're hoping that you really will get a real sense of that this morning as you enjoy this virtual breakfast. This uh, organization is wonderful at empowering women to be independent, to really have regard for their health, both mental and physical, and empowering them to have what they need to uh, do very well out in the community. So I am very proud to be a part of this organization, and I'm hoping that you will understand why here in the next uh, few minutes. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks for tuning in to Access Shelter's virtual breakfast event. My name is Tara Silva, Vice President, Commercial Banking at s and Bank. s and is proud to be a champion sponsor of today's event, and I am thrilled to be welcoming you all. s and believes in serving our community, which is why we are excited to partner with Access this year, and focusing on serving our neighbors is a priority for both organizations. This morning, I'm looking forward to hearing more of Access's successes and plans for the future. So on behalf of all of us at s and please sit back, relax, and enjoy your morning with access. I'd like to give a big thank you to board member Dr. Deb Plate from Cleveland Clinic Akron General and new friend Tara Silva from s and Bank for those great messages this morning. Thank you. Now I'd like to take a few minutes just to share a bit about what's been happening so far in this year. And like for all of you, 2020 at the emergency shelter and at step two has really been a year like no other. We opened our year spending some time evaluating and assessing the programs that we have here at the shelter and at step two to really take a look at how they were benefiting our residents and maybe what we could do better. And so we took a look at those things and made some changes so that our services were more trauma informed and so that we created a more resident centered environment. We have adopted the housing first approach here at our shelter. 
And what that is, is a best practice in homeless services delivery. It's based on the premise that all people are deserving of safe and affordable housing, no matter what. There's no exception. And so entry into our shelter is not predicated on any arbitrary pre-requirements. We serve people, meet their basic needs, and then work with them on the issues that they have. We really believe in choice and self-determination as being very important to them becoming more empowered, which is what our mission is all about. And we provide those things every day here at Access. Now staying in a shelter for women and children at any time of year can be challenging. It can be rough, but in a pandemic, it can be downright scary. And I wanna give a shout out to all of our essential staff here at the shelter. From the very early days of the pandemic, our staff was here 24 seven, making sure that we were still providing the essential services that were needed in the community for women and children. They showed true dedication and commitment to the mission. Quickly, a health and safety plan was developed to reassure and provide the most important services to women and children. Some of those things included in our health and safety plans, of course, included daily temperature checks for our staff and all of our residents, mandatory masks here in the shelter and at step two. We've staggered our meal times so that we have less congestion in our dining rooms. We have additional spacing for our unrelated single women that we serve, and we've put up some barriers so that there's more space between people for safety. As you can imagine, a lot of the crucial work that we do here at the shelter is person to person, and that includes the case management that we do, the groups that we provide, the life skills classes, the counseling. And so as the health crisis continued, we knew we needed to work on social distancing. And with that need came the need for more technology. We needed laptops, we needed iPads, we even needed faster internet connections here at the shelter. And luckily we were able to provide all those things when we needed them. But we couldn't do any of that without our community. We were so lucky to receive support from a lot of different resources, but I'd like to mention the Akron Community Foundation and the Joseph G. and Sally A. Miller Foundation who were able to help provide technology that we needed quite quickly early on in the pandemic. When we needed masks here at the shelter, you, our donors, dropped off handmade masks every week. We were, we were seeing them on our doorstep and we thank you for that. When we needed medical supplies, cleaning products, and thermometers, the community came through and we're so grateful for you to that, for that. We wouldn't be able to keep everybody safe and continue providing our services without all of you. Of course, we've seen additional challenges for our residents during the pandemic. For most of our residents, finding permanent housing and increasing their income are at the top of their goal lists. And these have been more difficult during the pandemic. There have been fewer jobs hiring when many things were shut down. Many of the landlords that would typically show a lot of our residents' apartments were not showing apartments. While many people received their stimulus checks to their permanent addresses, they took longer to get to an emergency shelter or to someone without a permanent bank. All of these really contributed to people needing to stay in emergency shelter for longer amounts of time. In addition to these things, we've seen higher incidence of mental health issues and chronic substance use issues. As we continue to move through this year, we're looking forward to our next needs here at the shelter and we're thinking about the youngest people that we serve here in shelter and that's the children. Like all of you, we're preparing for a school year that's going to be different than any we've had before. 
Many of the children that we serve here in shelter attend Akron Public School District, and as many of you know, their first nine weeks will be completely virtual. And so we're preparing for the needs of the families during this time. Our staff is quickly culling the resources needed to provide for that. We're looking at financial resources, additional technology, and acquiring more supplies for the kids to be safe in their learning endeavors. The shelter teen room will be set up for socially distanced vir virtual learning this fall. There are also additional challenges for the parents as we go into the school year. Like many of you, our parents aren't used to having to help their children go through all of the schoolwork on a platform that they're not used to using. Well, our parents have the additional challenges of having jobs that they perhaps cannot work from home in, that they can't take additional days from. So we're working with Akron Public School District and Project RISE to find the best solutions to these problems. Additionally, our parents need that time to be able to look for jobs, go to work and look for permanent housing. So this is very important and we will be finding solutions to these issues. The pandemic has not been the only catalyst for change here in our community and at our organization. The persistent disparity of resources, opportunities and equity in the community for black and other persons of color is cause for great concern for access. It's critical for us to address the marginalization due to race that is experienced here in the community. The population that we serve here at the shelter is 77% black or other persons of color. We are currently in the process of evaluating our current climate of racial diversity, inclusivity, and equity. Both the board of directors and ma the management team recognize this to be a high priority endeavor. We will be incorporating a variety of reflective and proactive actions into both the planning and operations of the organization as we move forward. We are very grateful to the Burton D. Morgan Foundation, which has recently awarded us um, a grant to continue our work in the area of diversity and inclusion. So that's wonderful news and will enable us to continue to work on this process. We are expecting a degree of an uncertainty as we continue through this year and into 2021 due to the unprecedented times. But ACCESS is committed to continuing our mission to serve women and children experiencing homelessness. We will continue to lift up women and children and we will be there for the community. But we can't do it without you. We have missed our visitors, friends, and volunteers in our building over the last several months, but you can still stay connected. Please continue to reach out to our staff here the Access community needs you. You can follow us on social media or check out our website anytime. You'll hear the latest news and learn how to be involved. I next would like to introduce you to our, our guest, Erin Demeray of First Energy and Access board member who's eager to give you an exciting update on one of our uh, most exciting and loved projects here at the shelter, our new reading room in the shelter. Um, you probably heard about this if you were with us at the breakfast last year, and we are putting together a new reading room for the youngest here at the shelter, and Erin's going to give you an update right now. Hello, and thanks for tuning in today to the virtual breakfast event. I'm here in the playroom at Access in the very spot that will soon be transformed into an exciting castle-themed reading room for families and children to enjoy. If you haven't heard the good news, this isn't a fairy tale. Access received generous financial and in-kind donations that will turn this reading room into a reality. In a few months, this space will look a lot different. We will be constructing a castle that will be filled with new books and supplies that will encourage kids to read and engage with books in ways that many may have never done before. 
To go along with this, we'll be starting a new volunteer-led story time to offer more reading support to the families at the shelter. Volunteers will select books to read to kids to enhance reading skills, imagination, and encourage positive relationships. If you have interest in volunteering for our story time program, please stay in touch. You may be wondering where these new books will be coming from and how you can help right now. Access started an Amazon wish list filled with books that enhance skills, promote creativity, and importantly, represent diverse characters and backgrounds. If you're interested in supporting our new program with a book donation, please visit the Amazon link on your screen right now. Thanks to all of you for joining our event today and enjoy the rest of your breakfast. Thanks, Aaron, for that great update. And I have an additional announcement about the reading room. We have just learned that construction will take place the week of October 5th on the reading room. And as Aaron said, please take a moment to check out our book wish list, which is listed on the GiveSmart FAQ page and on our website. Now, it's time for one of my favorite parts of our breakfast event. Our whole staff loves being able to share a glimpse into just one of the special families that has spent time at Access. It's now my pleasure to introduce you to a very engaging woman whose family recently resided at Access. Let's meet Lisa Edwards. My great grandson, his name is JVM Brown. He's five. I have custody of him. His mom was shot and it left her uh, blind. I had to be teacher, great grandmama, everything, playmate, and everything. I love him, that's my dude. He helps me, cause I don't hear well. He repeats stuff to me. I had a stroke. I didn't walk for about nine months. I had a quadruple heart bypass. From a car accident, I had metal all the way up my femur. So it was, it was a lot, it was a lot. Recovering from the stroke, recovering from the surgeries, I got a baby and I didn't know what I'm gonna do. When I came to Access, I was in therapy for speech. Everybody was so helpful. I couldn't do this without her. I couldn't do this without her. Mary, she's an angel. Oh, she wrote down all my medicine for me because after the stroke, I couldn't remember so much stuff. The child advocate, Denise, she would help with Javion and gave him some toys to have in our room together and he loved the playroom. It's the best room in here. <laughs> The food here was great. You hear me? The food was great. And it's all balanced. You just wouldn't get a bologna sandwich. You get a meal three times a day and then a snack at night. It was really good. All the programming here was wonderful. It was all geared towards what I needed. They did a physical for Javion, they did a physical for me. We did a mock interview and we learned about budgeting. Then we had peer support. You would leave out of there feeling, yeah, I could do this, you know? I am somebody. <laughs> Being here at Access was the best thing that happened for me. It did everything I needed. God has been so good. I made it. We're doing good. We're doing good. I'm back to work, and I have JB on. I have the girls that are my clients, and that's my life. I, I can't tell you enough about access. The staff with everything here put me on my feet. They put me on my feet again. Talk about a blessing. What a special woman Lisa is. When she was at the shelter recently to film her video, she captivated everyone with her enthusiasm and authentic spirit. Thank you, Lisa, for sharing your story with all of us this morning. 
your warmth, determination, and infectious personality are inspiring. If you attended the breakfast last year, you were able to be part of the first ever Lynn M. Budnick Empowered Woman Award. In 2019, this award was created in memory of Lynn, longtime executive director of Access and friend and mentor to many. She was a true champion for homeless women in our community. We will take time each year to remember Lynn and give an award to a former Access client that truly exemplifies both the mission of Access and the contagious spirit we all saw in Lynn. Recently, I had the honor of joining Jody Glitzenstein of Oriana House and 2020 Access Board President in distributing this year's Lynn M. Budnick Empowered Woman Award to Lisa Edwards. We are thrilled to present this year's Lynn M. Budnick Empowered Woman Award to Lisa Edwards. Oh, thank you. That is beautiful. Thank you so much. I don't know what to say. I'm about to cry. I knew Lynn for some years, and I am so proud to accept this from Lynn. She was so sweet. We're so, so proud of you. Um, everyone on the Access staff thought you were the perfect choice for this award, and we're so excited we could be here with you and some of your family and friends today yes. to give you this award. Um, just so proud of you. Congratulations. Ooh. Thank you. Lisa, we were really touched by your story of overcoming your homelessness crisis. So thank you for sharing that story, as well as how you utilize the resources at Access to land on your feet and overcome that crisis. Thank you. So in addition to this award, we're also going to give you $1,000 to utilize <laughs> for things that you may need. And it's oh my, my understanding God. that you're going to use the money to purchase some furnishings. Yeah. I am. So we're honored to give you this money, and you are Thank a shining you. example of empowerment and all the things that Lynn represented and believed in. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate this so much. Who would have thought that I would be getting this award? I just appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. You're so welcome. Thank Who you. Who did you bring with? What? family and friends did you bring here with you today? I have my granddaughter, Ayana, and Javion. That's his mom. That's my friend, my sister, Iris. That's my best friend in the world, Calvin. My friend, Carol, and they here for me. <laughs> Wonderful. You deserve it. You deserve it. Congratulations. Thanks for showing us what it truly means to be empowered, Lisa. Oh, my God. The example. Thank you. Thank you. What a terrific way to remember Lynn and carry on her memory. Congratulations, Lisa. I'm now joined by Lorraine Washington, Access Board Member and Senior Vice President of Human Resources and Volunteer Services at SUMA Health. Hi, Lorraine, how are you this morning? I'm doing great, Jackie. Um, thank you for um, inviting me here today. I'm excited to be a part of the program this year. We're so happy to have you. Well, I've had the honor of serving on the Board of Access since 2017, and what has always struck me is uh, the courageous stories of women just like Lisa. Um, the, they've been successful against all odds. Um, they find independence and self-sufficiency, um, and there is always an inspiring example of self-determination here at Access. Um, and that's why I encourage all of you to support Access as well by making a gift today. As Jackie mentioned, um, earlier in the program, you can donate on this very page. Please take a moment to consider what contribution you can make. And once our program is complete, or now if you like, scroll to the donation section and enter your donation information. Don't forget that any donation that you make this morning, up to $5,000, will be matched by a very special donor. Please help us reach our goal and fulfill our mission of empowering, empowering homeless women and their families. 
And, and before we move on to our next part, I want to give a quick update of where we are on donations so far this morning. We've received 20 new donations this morning, and we're up to $15,000 in donations. So thank you so much for um, all of your contributions this morning. They're going to go so far in doing a lot in this community for women and children experiencing homelessness. If you haven't made your donation yet, we would, would love to have um, a gift that's meaningful to you this morning and just take a moment to do that. Now, while we're not all together this morning, we still wanted to have an opportunity to connect with all of you out in the audience. And so prior to this morning, we asked for questions to be submitted to us that we could perhaps answer this morning so that we could connect with all of you. And we received several responses. And so, Lorraine, I'm going to ask if you could stay with me for a few minutes and maybe answer a few questions for our audience sure, this I'd morning. Love to. Wonderful, wonderful. So, our first question this morning comes from Margaret, and she is interested in knowing how the community can help Access achieve their mission. Well, you know, as a board member, I've always tried to support programs at Access, and one way to do that is to pay attention to what Access needs are, whether that is help with meals, help with volunteer services, um, purchasing supplies. We always have a wish list out on our uh, web page. So there's lots of ways you can help um, Access reach its mission without necessarily coming into the center. That's Those are all great ideas, and I think I would add to that mm -hmm. that, all of you watching today, if you would go home later or talk to some of your colleagues, talk to your family members and friends and just share with them what you've learned this morning about access, tell them a little bit about our mission. And I always think that word of mouth and sharing what, what good is going on in our community is always a way to help our mission. I agree with that, Jackie. Um, I have another question that comes from Sam in Akron. Sam wants to know if Access has any volunteer opportunities that he can take advantage of right now despite the current pandemic. Oh, that's a great question, great question. So yes, we have had this question also from others and Access is always in need of volunteers. The pandemic has not changed that uh, one bit. We're still seeing residents here every day. So we can use your help. And some of the things that people can do remotely is to help with a meal, whether it be preparing a hot meal and dropping it off here at the shelter or making some bagged lunches for us. That's always helpful. And we also are in need of people to organize some wish list donation drives for us. In a typical year, we have people in their workplaces or schools doing donation drives for some of the things that we need, but that hasn't happened this year due to the health crisis. And so we are in need of some things around the shelter. Um, and then looking forward to the rest of the year, we will still be doing adopt a family for the holidays. And we are also going to be looking for some people to help us out with children and their schoolwork as the school year starts. So lots to look forward to. Well, Jackie, I'm intrigued by the meal idea, but you, for those of people who know me, I'm not a cook. So can I just order pizza or chicken or something? You can definitely order pizza okay. or chicken. And I, I think that. that our residents would love that. Okay, great. I can do that. Okay. Um, our next question comes from Kevin. He wants to know what items do families need the most when they leave shelter? Well, Kevin, when, our, when families come to Access, they usually come with very little, um, and Access provides them with the basics, things like sheets, blankets, towels, and toiletries, and some clients even get clothing and shoes. Um, we are lucky to have a partner like Al Trusa, who provides kits with some household items for our clients as well. And I'm also sometimes asked if clients need furniture, and, and often they do. Yeah, that's a great question um, about the furniture. So luckily there's another great organization in the community called Core Furniture Bank. And when residents are leaving here into their own permanent housing opportunity, which they often are, we refer them there and they're able to pick out their own furniture for their new residences. So we, we tell people who want to donate furniture, call Core. Okay. and CORE will come and pick up your furniture and then they end up with our residence um, later on. That's great. Yeah. 
So, Jackie, some of my coworkers have asked this question, and I'm curious as well. Um, are we going to have the jewelry box event this year? <laughs> That's a great question. We're hearing that question too. And while we're not having our traditional jewelry box event this year, we are modifying our event and it will be the jewelry box to go. Okay. And this event will look a little different. It's not a good idea for all of us to gather um, in a ballroom over a weekend with hundreds of people, but we do still wanna get that jewelry in your hands, which I know everybody loves and we've still been taking donations of jewelry. So. Um, we're working with some of our friends in the beauty and fashion industry, and they will be pre-curating bags of jewelry, which can be purchased for a flat fee. Okay. There will also be opportunities if people want to have private jewelry parties. So more info to come on that. Great. Well, we can't get to all of the questions that people submitted, but that was just a few of them. But if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to us at any time. I wanna give you a last update on our donations. We're up to 30 donations. So in that quick five minutes, we had another 10 donations and we're up to $18,500 in donations. That's incredible. You guys are wonderful. Um, on behalf of all of us here at Access, we thank you very much for spending some of your precious time here with us this morning. Hopefully next year we'll all be together. Um, enjoy the rest of your day and we appreciate all you do to support our mission. And don't forget that donations made this morning up to $5,000 are being matched. So I'm going to make my donation um, as soon as we're done here. and. Don't you forget to make your donation too. And thank you for making a difference in the lives of women and children. Thank you and have a great day. Thank you.